How much is your soul worth? If the question was asked, how much is your soul worth? Mm -hmm. You will not be able to answer the question mm -hmm. because there is no available information mm -hmm. that can legitimately reveal how much the net worth of a man's soul is. That's right. Now everything on earth have a price tag attached to it, such as cars, mm -hmm. houses, electronic devices, land, food, clothes, gas, so forth, and so on. And in some cases, there are items that can be negotiated on. In other words, someone give you a price for something, but if you are a person of understanding, you can negotiate the price on that item. Mm -hmm. But how can you negotiate the price on something that you have no clue as to how much it is worth? Yes. I am talking about the worth of the human soul. How much is your soul worth? How much is your soul worth? Now if you would examine the subject of the human soul, you will find that it originated, its origination rather, is not of this earth. But the soul of a man had its beginning when God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of Adam. And Adam became a living soul. And this pattern has continued throughout history. God blowing into Adam's nostrils and Adam became a living soul and that pattern has continued throughout history. In other words, every child that is born into this world bears the breath of God in him or her, which is the soul of that person. Now let me make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Every child, you remember earlier I talked about Matthias, and I mentioned Dominic, they are just, they have just come into this world. They came from God through the womb of their mother, and now they are in this earth. So every child that comes into this world bears the breath of God in them, and that is the soul of that child. Now I want you to watch something here. Whenever a child is aborted in the womb of a woman, only the body dies, but the spirit continues to live. The body dies, but that spirit in that child, which is the breath of God, which is the spirit, the soul, it goes back to God as a baby, but yet it's still the child does not remain a baby for the child grows to become an adult in heaven. The fact that that he that life that they were supposed to live on earth. They never got the opportunity because someone aborted the child. Do I have a witness? Anyone? And, and, and so my wife Pam had a little boy and the little boy died. The body died, but the spirit continued to live on. And the spirit went back to God. The soul of that little boy went back to God. Now, Pastor, how do you know all of this? I've been doing this for a long time, and 
I have received revelation from God. I have received revelation, and there are a lot of things in books, in earthly books, that uh, have not been talked about as to what goes on in hell. And so, Pam had a dream, and this dream was, came to her as a gift of the word of wisdom, which reveals. And Pam had this dream where she had grown old and had passed away, and she went into heaven because she had lived a life right on earth, and she had given her life to Christ. So she had the opportunity to go into heaven, and when she got to heaven, she was met by this young man. And Pam said, oh, I got a young man to lead me around in heaven. And, and the, young, the young boy, her son, said, Mom, don't you know who I am? Pam woke up. The baby, when he died, he would die when he was a baby. But by the time she got into heaven, he was grown. Old enough for her not to even recognize him. Said, Mama, don't you know who I am? And, and so I say this unto you, you to understand it, that your soul is worth a whole lot. Somewhere in the womb of a woman, the body and the spirit rendezvous, and that child becomes a living soul. Now, if the child dies in the womb, the body dies, but the spirit goes back to God, and that spirit continues to grow. Now, because you remember I told you, nothing of God. Humanly speaking, ever dies. But your spirit was created, and it was created to live forever. Do I have a witness to anyone? And now, most people don't see the necessity in trying to understand how much their soul is worth until it's too late. You see, it's not in trying to place a monetary value on your soul. Because there is not enough money on earth to buy it. So then you place the value on your own soul. You place the value on your own soul when you make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. Now, if you choose not to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, your soul is going to be lost, useless, because it went into hell. You place the value on your own soul. See, that is not a monetary system that is able to calculate how much you are worth. Now, if you don't understand, if you don't believe what I'm talking about, do you, do you think, for instance, that God will come into this world and die for something that ain't no good? See, what you have allowed is men to dictate to you yeah. how much you are worth, Amen. what color you are, where you're from, how educated you are, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in. So therefore, they determine whether or not you're in the lower class, the middle class, and the upper class. But can I tell you this? You're in a class all by yourself, and that is the class of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you, based upon the information and knowledge that's presented to you while you're in the earth, you then place the value on your own soul. See, because if a person don't placing a value on their soul, they are not going to say that Jesus is the Son of God because they have not come to understand how much they are worth because they see everything in monetary value. See, the fact that many of they have not printed enough money in the earth to be able to purchase not one soul because the soul that you have was created by God and it is to last for always 
and eternity. So don't let nobody tell you from this day forward that you're not worth anything. Amen. 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 See, people are walking around with their nose stuck all up in the air. Why? Because of status. Because of what they have, whatever. But did you not know that Jesus Christ died for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl? He paid the same, God paid the same price for everybody. He didn't pay any more for that group. He didn't pay any less for this group. See, the fact of the matter is you are allowing somebody to tell you how much you are worth. And honey, I'm telling you to stand up, hold your head up and high, and know that you are somebody. Are you listening to me? For me to understand this, you know, just because someone has the advantage, they're your boss, okay, they live out west, or they, they, they have a lot of money and what have you, so they have the tendency to look down upon you. Right. See, the fact that many of they have never come to understand soul. You see the term soul and the term spirit. Two terms, right? But yet they are not the same. Even though we use the terms interchangeably, the term soul and the term spirit, we use the terms interchangeably. Now, I'm using the term exclusively today, soul, because I don't want to confuse you, but what the soul actually is, it is the mind, the will, emotions, and intellect. That's what the soul is. Now the spirit is real you. And God's pattern was when man, first, when man first became a living soul, a living spirit, God <laughs> blew into his nostrils and he became a living soul. And that pattern has continued. So every child, every child whether it be male or female, whether white or black, Asian, Native American, every child that comes into this world bears the breath of God, which is the spirit. So like I said, that if a child dies in the womb, the body dies, but the spirit goes back to the Father. And guess what? When you get to heaven, oh, you're going to see the child. Because the child, is I mean, the child can't. I mean, the spirit can't die. Amen. Body can, but the spirit can't. So then, when you go to heaven, you're going to see the child, and if the, if the child could say something to you in a vision or in a dream, you know what they would say? Why didn't y'all want me? Mm. Wow. Wow. Are you listening to me? Why didn't y'all? Me. And so somewhere in the womb, there was a rendezvous point where the body and the spirit comes together and the child becomes a living being. Are you listening to me? And so a soul is extremely valuable. And my question to you is how much? Is your soul worth? And see, a lot of time we talk about, you know, things that I, I talked about, everything in the, in the world usually have a, a, a price tag attached to it, and it does. You go in the store, you're going to find a price attached to it. You buy a bottle of water, you're going to find a price attached to it. These glasses, you're going to find a price attached to it. So my question is, how much are you worth? How much are you, how much are you worth? Have you ever sat down and asked yourself the question, how much am I worth? See, your mind ought to go back and try to understand how much was paid for you to keep you out of hell. All right. All right. Did you not know that it cost God tremendously to save you so obviously you ought to see in that that you are worth something. But Lord, 
They said that I wasn't worth much. Lord, they said because I'm a certain color, I'm not worth much. But Lord, they said because I don't drive a new car. Lord, they said because I don't have a house. Lord, they said because I don't have a lot of money to make. Lord, they said because I don't have this, I'm not worth very much. But the Lord said that I created you in my image and in my likeness. So therefore, you are worth something. So stop listening to what folks say Amen. regarding how much you're worth. How much is your soul worth? And see, and the fact that matter. Now, let me say this again to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. You place a value on your own soul. When you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you know what happens when you do that? You're setting yourself up to leave for eternity. And did you not know the time is going to come where everybody is going to discover that their soul was priceless? Amen. Amen. The time is going to come. Amen. And what Dr. So-and-so said and Miss So-and-so said, the time is going to come that what they were saying was erroneous. But the time is going to come where you are going to discover that you were priceless in the sight of God. You know, I mean, just, just think about this for a minute. You mean to tell me, you think that Jesus was going down into that high hell for three days and three nights for, for something that wasn't worth anything? He went down of you even though you wasn't born. But he was set in the pattern so that everybody that came into this world would not have to go. All they had to do was just recognize how important they are by acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You will altogether miss that place. But there are some folk just want to go, irregardless to how involved they are, irregardless to how much information they have received and how much information has been presented to them. They still want to go because they want to have that way in this earth. No, I don't know. Don't nobody believe in that antiquated stuff. That awful obsolete book. Well, don't nobody believe in that. But the time is going to come when you're going to wish that you picked up that old obsolete book and read it for yourself. See, the fact that man is God is just. He has paid a visit to everybody here. You know, last week I talked about the call of God and what have you. And you have the opportunity to accept the call or reject the call and what have you. In regard to a person's color, creed, whatever, Everybody has received a call from God to come into the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about the ministry here. I'm just talking about everybody has received a call from God to get saved. And you have the freedom to choose whether or not you want God as your father. And the fact of the matter is one day you're going to wish that you had listened to something somebody was saying regarding the things of God. Is that okay? Amen. Let's turn to... Mark 8th chapter, verses 36 through 37. That's Mark 8th chapter, verses 36 through 37. For what, is it, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, you know, if a person has been down and never up, haven't, haven't achieved a lot in life, have always worked, low paying job, or what have you. Now, what about if somebody legitimately who had the ability to give you a billion dollars for your soul? Would you, would you let it go? Hmm? I know, I know it, it's easy why you're sitting up in here hearing me say this. <laughs> You've been running around, you know, eating beans, and nothing wrong with beans now. See, but you wanted the steak, but you got to eat beans because you can't afford a steak. And all of a sudden, now somebody's going to offer you enough money to be able to buy the thing, but, but the catch is, you got to give up your soul. But what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? What in this world is it a yacht? Hmm? Billion dollars? A handsome man? Beautiful woman? What would you accept in exchange for your soul? You know, the fact of the matter is, we are so accustomed 
or addressing everything with a monetary value. Because when you go to the car dealer, you know, to buy a car, you have in your mind what you want to pay. When you go and try and purchase the house, you have in your mind what you want to pay. You go into the clothing store, you have in your mind what you want to pay. You go in the grocery store, you have in your mind what milk should cost and what bread should cost and what have you. And so, you know, you, you go ahead and pay it and what have you. But the fact of the matter is, your soul. Nobody on earth has the information or have given legitimate information for you to be able to understand how much your soul is actually worth. See, and this is why Jesus went to the cross to pay for it. Did you not know that you belong to yourself? You belong to God? And when Jesus actually went to the cross, went down in the hell, he actually paid for your soul. So that ought to let you know that you are worth something. So that is not anything that has been made, that is made now, uh, that's going to be made in the future that can compare with the worth of your soul. And you place the value on your own soul when you say that Jesus is the Son of God. By doing that, you have sealed your faith as far as living with God for all eternity. Now, what happened? What happened if I miss heaven? Do I cease to live? Let me put it this way. You are lost, useless, because your soul is going into a place where there is nothing down there, nothing but, nothing but bad things. See, but you made the choice. You made the choice. But when you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you avoid all of that. Is that okay? Let's look at Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs 3. And I'm going to show you this here. In Proverbs 3, we're going to read verses 12 through 18 in Proverbs, the third chapter. Are you there? If not, you just write it down and just, just go back a little later and look at it. Start with the 12th verse. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects, even as the father of the son in whom he delights. Notice in the 13th verse. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. You see that? Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Now that verse, 13th verse, is kind of alluding to salvation. Is that okay? Let me read it again so you can see it. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that giveth understanding. Now notice in the 14th verse. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. So you mean to tell me, Pastor Reese, that gold, silver, fine merchandise and what have you is not more than one salvation? That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. See, salvation, in order to receive it, you know, God had to draw you, okay? And God had to do a miracle on the inside of you. Salvation in and of itself is a miracle because nobody can do it but God. So it's worth more than any money that has ever been printed and no more than any money that will be printed. I mean, I know, I know, I know, you say this, that money actually is all things. The Bible says that money actually is all things. And it does. But yet it's still, there is not enough money that's able to purchase your soul. Now notice in the 14th verse again. For well, the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain that love than fine gold. She, salvation, is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Lift of these is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Now let me pause there just for a minute in the 16th verse. Now, I have heard a lot of people say that 
everybody have a same time to die. That's not the case. See, God knows because he is God. He's standing today and also standing tomorrow. Yes, he knows the day that everyone is going to die. But there is not a certain time for you to die. Because the Bible says, and the other part of them to be in wants to die after this judgment. So therefore, there are things that you can do to live in your days on the earth. And there is also things that you can do to shorten your life on the earth. Are you listening to me? And so, God, according to, uh, I believe it's uh, Psalm 91, it talks about how God has given man 70, and by strength of, uh, by reason of strength, he can live 80 years. But we have people living from 70, 80, 90, and 100 years. So when a person actually dies before the age of 70, they, that, 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 that's, that's not them living out their lives, okay? I know sickness and disease and all of that, but God has given men 70, 80, 90, and sometimes 100 years. So you don't have a certain time to die. They say, oh, no, everybody got, a certain, everybody got a certain time. No, no, you don't. You have an appointment with death, but God had not sat down and said, well, oh, y'all going to kill him in July. <laughs> 2023. No, it's, it's not like that. Because there is a certain thing that you can do because you, you know drugs will cause your life to be cut short. And indulgence of alcohol will cut your life short. And by getting in the thing that you shouldn't be getting in could cause your life to be cut short. But try to live right. Try to live right. It can add some days onto your life. Notice it. What it says again. 16 verse. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her way the ways of pleasantness and all her path of peace. She is the tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. So you can lay hands, apprehend salvation, but it's up to you to retain it. Pastor Reese, wait just a minute now. You mean to tell me that I can get saved and I can turn around and lose my salvation? That's exactly what I'm saying. See, it's your responsibility, and once you get it, to retain it, to hold on to it, to hold on to it like you know that somebody's coming trying to steal it from you. You know, I, I talked about a message, you know, saying he's trying to steal your soul. So he, he's not trying to steal them that are unsaved because they already belong to him. He's trying to steal those that are saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb and made white in the snow. So he wants you. He wants you because he's mad because at one time he was his house and Jesus came and, 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 and kicked him out and he had to turn you over to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So he's mad. He's doing everything he can to try to steal you back. So it's up to you. Once you get it, to retain it. How do I retain it? By sticking close to God. How do I stick close to God? I have to continue to hear the word. Larry, I have to continue to hear the word. I have to put the word into practice. I think David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against my God. So there are things that I have to do in order to retain my salvation. Now, you can get lazy and start doing things that are contrary to the will and the word of God. And guess what? All the while you're doing that, doing things that are contrary to the will of God, all the while you're doing that, you'll backslide. That the term backslide is in the Bible. That was the term that Michael Jackson made up. That's the that's that term is in the Bible. A person can backslide so far that they can backslide right on out of the door of the kingdom. So, you have to continue to hide the word in your heart because you have a thief that's coming along trying to steal it. Because you, you, you know why he's trying to steal it? Because he understands how much you're worth. He understands how much you're worth. Now, what happened, you remember I told you earlier, that God blew the breath of life 
And Adam and Oprah, they became a living soul. And see, God left him with his free will. But he used his free will to commit what is called high treason. He betrayed the trust of God, and when he betrayed the trust of God, Satan became the God of this world. In other words, the creation now, the creation of man, now belonged to Satan. So God had to do something to legitimately come back and get his creation back. And what he did, he came in the presence of Jesus and went down in the hell and paid for your spirit, your soul, and your body. So all about you. Don't belong to you. I know you. I know you look in that mirror every morning when you brush your teeth, putting your makeup on, and brothers when you spray that cologne and what have you. I know you say, hey, you know, like this. I belong to me. No, you don't. No, you don't. See, first of all, you belong to Satan at one time. But when you acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, now He had to render ownership of you over to. God. And he had rules. He had rules. God had a way of doing things. And he had rules. Because he want your soul to be saved. Because he understand how much it is worth. Nothing, Laura, on the earth. Nothing. I don't care how much oil is found in the Middle East. I don't care how much a person has, they don't have enough to give you for that one soul. Because that one soul is extremely important to God. We all are. That's how come God continues to call ministers, preachers and teachers. You know, to you, it might seem like a waste of time. See, a person could have heard a message 55 times. But on that 56th time, it might register. And guess what? That's a soul that's not lost. How many times were you witness to? How many times someone talked to you? You got mad, didn't you? Please don't tell me that you did. You, you didn't want to hear it. Let's put it that way. You didn't want to hear it. Well, here comes someone so I can come. <laughs> you want to start talking about God? I don't want to hear that stuff. Please don't tell me that you, you, you were almost was there. See what old brothers, a sister saw. So they had that way made. See what you did. See but what you didn't realize that God sent them to you. See what you, you were nice. And you turned around and went in the bathroom. I went outside. I don't want to hear that stuff. I'm talking to all these little and you know, out of place. Nobody want to hear that stuff. But see, the fact that it is, there was a person that had come to the conclusion that his soul was worth something. Is that okay? Let's look at another version. Let's look at Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans 5. And I want, you to, I want you to listen at this. Number five, we're going to read verses 8 through 11. If you can't find it, just write it down. Romans 5, verses 8 through 11. But God commended or demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were Yes, sinners, Christ died for us. Why we were yet sinners? But God demonstrated a commended his love towards us, in verse, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Notice in the ninth verse, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord by Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. 
enemies of God. All of a sudden, but enemies of God. But the blood of Jesus Christ it changed all of that. So we, we had communion earlier. And in communion, when we are partaking in communion, it helps reminds us the price that was paid. The price that it, it cost a person's life. Now, if I can be honest, very few people in this earth are giving their lives for somebody else. Very few people upon this earth love somebody so much that they are willing to give their life for somebody else. Now, I did not say, I want you to listen to me very carefully. I did not say that it's not being done, but I said very seldom it's done. Now, you ask yourself the question, would I give my life for so and so? Would I give my life for so and so? That's a, that's a big thing for you to ask. See, I'm not talking about giving up a kidney. I'm not talking about anything like that. You know, you, you, you can function on one kidney or whatever, and some people, if, if it's compatible, you can, you, can, you can give someone a kidney, and I think there are the, maybe another argument too that you can perhaps, somebody can, you can loan to someone, give it to someone, you don't loan it because once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone because once they cut it out, it, it, it. See, but you, you find somebody may, may do that, but as far as giving their life, I mean, that you know, like, that's it for you, that they may leave, See, but the thing, that, the fact that the man of Jesus gave his life for crooks, sinners, lawless people, he demonstrated his love while we were yet sinners. The reason why y'all listen to me because it because of the soul, because of how much your soul is worth. You can't see it. All you can see is the exterior of yourself, which is of this body that houses the soul. And at the point of death, that body is going to go to the dust of the ground. And guess what? That soul, which is worth so much, that's going to come the devil is after it. Why do you think the devil is after you? Because you're pretty? Because you wear nice clothes? Because you live in a decent neighborhood? Because you can speak two languages? Why do you think the devil is after you? He's after your soul. That's why he's after you. He understands the ends and the outs of human life more than you. That's how come God gave you the book and it's not adequated and it's not obs obsolete. You read this book to understand who you are and what you have in Christ Jesus. So it's a lot of things that I understand now simply coming from the word of God. And from revelation of Jesus. Yes. Going to bed and not knowing something, but wake up and say, now how did, I, how did I know this? How did I know that it was deposited in my spirit while I was asleep by Jesus Christ? It happened to Paul, so how come it can't happen to us? I thought you said that the Lord had no respect of a person. If God reveals something to Paul, if God reveals something to Peter, we're the same family. Wouldn't that mean that God would be present if he came to Paul and wouldn't give it to you? So he's the, he's the same. <coughs> so what he gave to us, he would give to you. So the devil is after you because you don't understand who you are. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. He blinded folk, keeping them from salvation. Now notice I said, and I'm going to say this again, I want you to understand me. You Place the value on your own soul. You place it. When you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you place the value on it. Because you finally came to understand that I'm worth something, and in order for me to live for eternity, I got to go through Jesus. And did you not know that you can't, your comprehension can't even contain what's in heaven? See, every so often, somebody listen to me now, every so often, God will allow somebody from earth to have a vision in heaven and come back and share all the opulence that's up there. 
And then when it's all a little bit. And then usually they have to fight to get him out of them. And no, you can't stay here. The Lord, you can't stay here. The Lord, you can't stay here. They want to stay. Why? Because they see something and feel something and sense something that's not on earth. See, but what God wants to do through Jesus is to bring a little heaven, a little out of heaven on earth. So we won't be so caught off God. Amen. Have you ever heard of somebody that have a testimony? When they, when, they, when they went into heaven? And how they talked with Jesus? And when they saw all the beauty, the water, the flowers, the people, and whatever, no sickness and no disease or whatever, it was kind of hard to get my mouth down. You know? <laughs> because they knew where they were coming, coming back to. I got to go to that job with that old mean boss on Monday. My body be aching, knees be hurt, other riders, you know, I got to wear glasses. See, but you don't pray, but you don't, you, don't, you don't see any of that. So they wanted to stay, and the Lord know you got to go back. So every so often, he will let somebody come in, and when somebody is giving a testimony, you find haters. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But God allowed it to happen for them to give that testimony so that you can hear it and know what awaits you. Do I have a witness in one? Yeah. Now, if you miss out on going to hell and going to hell, you will finally realize how much your soul is worth. Now, you see, your soul is extremely valuable to God. You know, I'm saying this over again. He came into the world in the person of Jesus. He took all of your sins, sicknesses, zealous shortcoming upon himself. He went to the cross, shed his blood, died on the cross. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. His body didn't go to hell. His soul went to hell. Where did his body go? They put it in Joseph's tomb. See, but Jesus' soul was in hell. He allowed Jesus' soul to go into hell so that your soul wouldn't go. He became your substitute. If you, if you notice, Jesus, they put Jesus' body in the tomb. See, but the body wasn't the real Jesus. The body housed the real Jesus. And the soul went down to hell for three days and three nights. And when God was satisfied, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Now understand this. You may not never come to understand why you're on this earth, how much your soul is worth. But the time will come where you will realize that your soul is priceless. Because Jesus his soul. Read if you don't believe it, read in Acts the second chapter. You'll find that his soul went down into hell. For three days and three nights so that you don't have to go. He did that to keep the devil from having you. Wow. Are you listening to me? Yes. Oh, this is some good information, preacher. Yes. This is some good information. Now, let's look at Psalms the eighth chapter, eighth number of the Psalms. The eighth number of Psalm. I want you to see this. The eighth number, the eighth number of the Psalms. You find these words. Start with the third verse. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained or put in place. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. And hast crowned him with glory and honor. That's talking about us now. That's talking about us. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. But guess what? When you get out of here, and when you go to heaven, the Bible says that we are going to be as the angels 
In other words, there's going to be some equality. But it's why we're in this earth. The Bible says he made us a little lower than the angels. But when you get out of here, you're going to be as the angels are. Notice in the sixth verse. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. He's talking about us. All sheep and oxen. Yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. So do you see how much you're worth until the Lord made us and put, put the works of his hand, you know, under our feet? He created us in this image, and after his likeness. And let me give you one more verse and we're going to close here. Am I blessing anybody? Yes. We're going to look at Ephesians 2. And start with 8 verse. Ephesians 2, start with 8 verse. For by the grace, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now I want you to pay close attention to the 10th verse. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in him. For we are his workmanship. In other words, we are, and you've heard me say this before, we are masterpieces Amen. of God. How can you say that I am a masterpiece of God? Why would you say that? First of all, there is not anything that God has created that he put more care in than a man. And, and the fact that the man is here, the man cannot be duplicated. The reason why, because God hid the blueprints. You can't, you, you, you can't, man can't make blood. Man can't make a heart. Man can't make lungs. Man can't do anything. So when God made this masterpiece of man, okay, he hid the Don't you know that when, when, when you build a certain house, let's just say Ray and Kim's house, that was a blueprint that the builder went by to make it. So when God sit around the table, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost said, let us make man, that's the blueprint. We will make him in our image. And after our likeness, this will be our blueprint, and we will set him over the works of our hands. So that men can't duplicate him and they're real high to blueprint. So what I'm saying is that you are somebody. Amen. Your soul is worth something. So from this day forth, irregardless of what somebody may say to you, you let it, you know, just, just, just let it hit you and let it bounce off. And understand that a great price had been paid for me because my soul is worth more than anything that could be found upon this earth. Now give the Lord a hand. Amen.